and welcome to TL Physics. Uh, my name's Sarah and today I'm going to be doing question two from paper 2017, paper one of the A-level. So this is the A-level, not the AS. So one paper, one question two. So all my questions will appear on this side of the board and I'll try to do as much working as I can on this side of the board here. I'm going to go through some hints and tips on how to do with these questions. So question one, figure one shows an arrangement used by a student to investigate vibrations in a stretched nylon string of a fixed length L. He measures how the frequency F of the first harmonic vibrations for the string varies when I put the mass on it. The table one, which is what I've written up here, shows the results of the experiment. Show that, so question 2.1, show that the data in table one is consistent with the relationship of F is proportional to the square root of T, where T, and they don't, they say here, T is the tension in the string. These questions, I'm going to make very clear what you have to do. If you see questions like this, it's very simple, and you must do this every single time. So what I've been given is three sets of data, and I've been asked to say the frequency is directly proportional to the square root of the tension. In other words, what I'm saying here is that the frequency equals a constant, z, times by the square root of the tension. Now, what I've seen students try to do is put in this into the, uh, the standing wave formula, or the first harmonic formula, okay? You don't need to do that here. They've just given you a proportional relationship. Now, when you are given this, you're supposed to do this for every single point in that chart. Do not just do it once. You need to do it for every single point. This is only worth two marks, okay? So when you're trying to do this, you're trying to prove that all of these data will fit into this relationship. Now, a little twist that they've done here is they've put tension and they've put mass up here. So one of the things that you must do to, on this question is realize that, okay, tension and string is related to the mass. What they've done is got a piece of string, hung a mass off it, and that mass has a weight and that weight causes a tension. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert all of these masses into um, gravity, okay? So into weight, I do apologize. So I'm going to times it by 9.81. So 0.5 times 9.81. So I'm just going to do it quickly. 0.5 times 9.81 is 4. Yeah. 0.905. 0.8 times 9.81. So 0.8 times 9.81 equals 7.848. And 1.2 times 9.81. So 1.2 times 9.81 is 11.772, okay? So now I have all the tensions. So what I need to do is I need to do this for each formula, finding Z each time. This is what this means. If they ask you if something is proportional and they want you to prove it, what you need to do is you need to find this constant for each of these results and then make a comment. And that make a comment bit is the most important. So let's do this. We'll call this A, B, and C. So 110 equals Z times the square root of 4.905. So Z equals, so 110 divided by the square root of, oops, sorry about that, of 4.905. Uh, that is 45.15, okay? So let's do the next one. So I've got uh, 140 is Z times the square root of 7.848. So the square root of 7, uh, so 140 divided by the square root of 7.848. Um, and that equals 40, Z is 49.97. And the last one is uh, 170 equals Z times the square root of 11.772. So 170 divided by the square root of 11.772, and that equals 49.54. Just wanna double check the first one again, because of course these two are quite similar to each other. So as you can see, these two here are quite similar. Uh, that one's not, so I'm just gonna check my working very quickly. Square root, uh, 110 divided by, oops, apologize about that. Let's put this here. I've got a wandering thing here, which is very frustrating. Nope. Nope. Do apologise. That should hold it. Good. Uh, so 
4.905, oh God, 110 divided by the square root of 4.905. Get an answer, oh, 49.66, so I did make a mistake. Seven, okay. So, I have found Z for every single one of these. This is where the second mark comes, because you must, must, must do this. Not only must you do it for every single point of data, you also must make a comment. Because Z for each value is consistent, F is proportional to the square root of T. So by finding these values here, and actually finding that they're consistent, is important because what it does is it shows that this relationship is true. So that is only worth two marks. That question comes up a lot. So please, please, please be aware of that when you actually do it. So question 2.2. Let's rip this off the board. And the question here asks you a nylon string used has a density of 1150 kilograms per meters cubed and an area or a uniform diameter of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Determine the length L for the string. Okay. This is worth three marks. So this is a determined, this means a calculation. Now, they have talked about a, an equation here. They've talked about the fact that it is, um, oh, Willow, where is it gone? They've talked about using it to stre stretch on a scene of fixed length. He measures the frequency of the first harmonic. That should give you a massive hint on where to look, okay? So in the data sheet, flicking over to waves, we see the formula for the first harmonic. So we see the formula of F is one over two L square root tension over mu. So this formula has got this L in it. This one, mu, is known as the mass per unit length. And this kind of gives us a bit of a scupper because I've got two lengths. But this is something special about density. If you are ever given the density of anything, immediately write the density formula down. So I know that density is a mass over volume. Now this is a string. The volume of a string is the length times the area. And as you can see, this here, this mass over length, is that there. So I know that density is mu divided by A or mu A equals lambda. And this is important because you can use this in any way, shape or form to find out values. So we are given the diameter. Let's work out this area. So I've got pi r squared. So I've been given the diameter, so I must remember to half it. So pi times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 squared. And that equals, so 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to square that. I'm going to times that by pi. And I get an area of 1.96 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay. I know that mu here is also known as rho A. So 1150 times by my area is 2.25 times, eh, 2.26 times 10 to the minus four. Now this is important. This mass is not the mass that's been put on the string. This is the mass of the string itself. Okay, so please don't get confused and start trying to use the formulas from the last one. I'm actually going to use some data from the last one to input the information. So I'm going to use mg to find the tension again, but I'm not, and I repeat, I'm not going to use that for this m here, because this is the mass of the string. Okay, so let's do this. 
let's go frequency. So I'm going to pick one of the values from before because that will help me. So I know when the mass of the uh, weights uh, equal 0.5 kilograms, tension was 9.81 times uh, 0.5, 4.905. And the frequency was 110. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the, these information into this thing here. So I've got 110 equals 1 over 2L, the square root of 4.905 over 2.26 times 10 to the minus 4. So let's rearrange this. Square root that. So this here is 147. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate those two around. Okay, so the L is going to come up and the 110 is going to do come down. So I'm going to times that by 1 divided by 220. So I end up with L oops, equaling 0.67 meters. So if I just run over to my mark scheme, which is on the computer here, you get quite a nice few marks here. You get one mark for this bit here with the density. So even if you are unsure, if they give you the density, use it, okay? If they give you the density worked out, and this part of the volume of a prism is the length of the air, is so important. This formula here, using it and putting the data is another mark, and the right answer of 0.67 meters is the last mark there. So that there is question 2.2, worth three marks, and this is how to do it. So let's move on to question 2.3. Now, it's again another written one that is worth two marks. So this is a written question here, and as you can see on the board, the student uses the relationship in question 2.1 to predict frequencies for tension are much larger than use those using the experiment. Explain how the actual frequencies would be different to those that the student predicts. So what this is saying is that I'm going to put really large weights on it. Um, why might the frequencies be different than what I'm predicting? Now let's actually think about it. It's a piece of string and I'm sticking a massive weight on it. What happens, it starts to pull. This is a materials kind of question, okay? So what you need to talk about is the fact that the tension would stretch the string. Ooh, can't spell today. Therefore, basically pulling it, making the diameter of that string smaller. How would this affect it? Well, since mu is rho a, if, if a changes, so does mu. Which means frequency is not directly oops, proportional to square root of t. Because what I'm assuming is that in my equation here, I'm actually assuming that mu stays the same no matter what. But when I put large forces on it, I stretch the wire, and that wire means that area gets smaller, gets thinner, and you see that it's, it's called ductile failure. If the area is changing, mu changes, and we assume that mu stayed the same, it's not. So if the area changes, so does mu, which means the frequency is now not directly proportional to square root of t, which means you can't use the formula. So what I've done is I've stated the reason why it could be a problem, and then I have stated why mathematically that would mean the relationship's not true. So as you can see here, it says explain. Again, with explaining, you have to state a fact and then justify it with some physics. So I've stated a fact, tension would stretch the string, therefore making the diameter smaller. I've stated a fact, that would happen. 
And then I said, how would that affect the mathematics? So I've said that mu, a, mu equals rho a. If a changes, so does mu, which means that f is now no longer directly proportional to root t. This would give you two marks, telling me the reason, stating the fact, and then justifying it with some physics. And it's really important with explain questions that you do that, that you state the obvious and then you justify your answer. So that...